So good morning, everyone. Um, before we begin, I would like to thank the MDS Foundation for the kind invitation to present data on venetoclax in higher risk MDS and AML at this symposium. These are my disclosures. So to set the stage, um, the therapeutic options for higher risk MDS has been quite limited so far. And these patients have a very poor prognosis with a median overall survival ranging from a few months to up to two years. Patients eligible for allogeneic transplant will proceed to this procedure with or without a bridging therapy, um, mostly dependent on the blast counts in the bone marrow. And the majority of patients who are not eligible for allogeneic transplant will go on to receive hypomethylating agents. Even though hypomethylating agents have been the mainstay of therapy for the past 15 years, there are several limitations of this therapy, as we all know too well. About only half of the patients will respond to hypomethylating agents. Times to response can be very long, and some patients will only achieve stable disease, which is of questionable benefit. The median response in the AZA-011 trial was 14 months with a median overall survival of 24 months, and almost invariably all patients will relapse or progress. The prognosis after failure of HMA is exceptionally poor and is about only four months. So there is definitely a need for improvement for this patient group. So venetoclax is a BCL2 specific inhibitor, which most of you are surely familiar with, with this in the setting of chronic lymphocytic leukemia and B-cell lymphomas. Many cancer cells have been shown to have a high level of BCL2, which is a pro-survival or anti-apoptotic protein. When bound to the pro-apoptotic proteins such as BIM, apoptosis is inhibited. Venetoclax binds to BCL2 and displaces BIM, and thus frees BIM to activate the apoptotic cascade at the mitochondrial membrane, which results in the release of cytochrome C and subsequently caspase activation, which results in cancer cell death. So is there a rationale for inhibiting this pathway in MDS? And actually, evidence for increased apoptosis resistance in higher risk MDS has been around for quite a while, as shown by this um, publication from Ghulam Mufti's group from 1998. And as you can see on the left side, lower risk MDS patients have a high level of spontaneous apoptosis, shown here in CD34 positive progenitor cells by measuring an exon. And this apoptosis is decreased as is MDS progresses to higher risk. This is accompanied by an upregulation of BCL2 and BCLX in higher risk MDS and a downregulation of BAD and BAX proteins, resulting in uh, a change in the BAD to BCL2 ratio. So given this data, there is definitely a rationale for um, using venetoclax in higher risk MDS. In addition, there may be synergy between venetoclax and hypomethylating agents, as these have been shown to be able to modulate the levels of other um, apoptotic proteins such as BSL, BCL, XL, and MCL1, which may later mediate resistance to venetoclax. So using primary bone marrow samples from MDS and secondary AML patients, as well as healthy CD34 positive controls, we have previously shown that venetoclax or ABT199 as it was previously called, um, selectively inhibits the survival and the colony forming capacity of cells from high risk MDS patients and secondary AML compared to healthy bone marrow controls. And this provides clinical, preclinical evidence for the efficacy of this drug in MDS. As you all know, more rapid clinical progress has, made, has been made in venetoclax and azacytidine used for AML therapy. And the newly published trial of the Viala A in the New England Journal of Medicine has led to the formal approval of this treatment in AML. Patients in this trial were either 75 years 
or older or had significant comorbidities. And they were randomized to be treated with phenetoclaxin azocytidine or placebo and azocytidine with the primary endpoint being overall survival. The venetoclax that, dose that was previously determined in the prior trials that was used in this trial was 400 milligrams daily, continuously throughout the trial. These are the patient characteristics of the patients included in the trial, and I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that 60% of patients were over 75 years or older, and the performance status of almost half of the patients was either two or three. So we're definitely dealing with a vulnerable patient population here in need of close clinical monitoring and supportive care. These are the final results of the trial showing an overall response rate of a very impressive 66.4% for the combination of azacitidine and venetoclax compared to 28% in the placebo arm. And the trial did meet its primary endpoint with an impressive overall survival of 14.7 months compared to 9.6 months in the placebo arm. And for comparison, the overall survival in the AZO001 trial leading to the approval of azacytidine was 10 months. Accordingly, in this trial, azacytidine and venetoclax was given for a higher cycle number of 7 than a median cycle number of 4.5 in the placebo arm. Of note, the improved overall survival was seen for all subgroups um, with a bit, little bit of a lesser effect seen in those patients that had, had a FLT3 ITD mutation, patients with TP53 mutations, or with NPM1 mutations. So, um, where do we stand with venetoclax in higher risk MDS? This um, table is a summary of the ongoing trials being done in higher risk MDS. Um, the trial, the one phase 1B trial with relapsed refractory higher MDS um, is the furthest along in terms of available data and updated data will actually be presented at this ASH meeting. The phase 1B trial in treatment naive higher risk MDS has recruited but no data are available yet and the M15954 trial will be the randomized double blind, sorry, randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial, which will begin recruitment shortly. In the M15522 trial, um, evaluating venetoclax and azacytidine in relapsed refractory MDS, this trial um, included patients that either had a relapse after initial response of at least hematologic improvement or a failure to achieve response after at least four cycles of um, hypomethylating agents. And of course, the primary endpoint was safety and secondary endpoints were overall response rate, progression-free survival, and overall survival. Um, venetoclax was begun at a dose of 100 milligrams for 28 days, but the final dosing regimen that was decided for the safety expansion cohort was 400 milligrams of, during 14 days of therapy. And these are the results of the trial preliminarily, which were presented at this year's EHA meeting. And you can see an impressive overall response rate of 41%. Um, patients who achieved a response had a median cycle number of nine, and the median time to first response was very short, as it was in the AML trial with 1.4 months. Um, importantly, seven patients went on to get allogeneic transplant, and there were three fatalities um, due to sepsis. The median overall survival so far in this trial was an impressive 12.6 months, which is extremely encouraging given the dismal outcome that was previously reported for HMA failure patients. Outside of a clinical trial, there are quite a number of centers who have been using this combination in higher risk MDS. And this is a recent publication on 44 patients retrospectively evaluated, um, which were either hypomethylating agent naive or had been pretreated with hypomethylating agents. And as you can see, the response rates were very high in all four groups of, in all three groups of patients. 
But importantly, the investigators also reported 21% discontinuation rate due to adverse events. And this indicates that this is not such an easy regimen for MDS patients to adhere to. Impressively, the overall, survive rate, overall survival rate in HMA failure patients was 11.4 months, which is very, very good. And um, in 62% of responding patients, and this was um, 16 patients, they went on to receive allogeneic transplant, as you can see on the right side, and had a significantly prolonged overall survival. And this indicates that the combination of venetoclax and azacitidine can be successfully used as a bridging strategy to allogeneic transplant. Finally, I would like to spend a few minutes discussing uh, safety, toxicity, and the management of adverse events. As you can see from uh, the data in the VL tri A trial, febrile neutropenia was sig significantly higher in the um, AZA plus venetoclax group than in the placebo group. However, the 30-day mortality and the 60-day mortality was not significantly different, indicating that um, adverse events such as febrile neutropenia can be efficiently managed in this setting. Um, dose discontinuations, dose interruptions, and dose reductions um, were a little bit higher in the um, AZA plus venetoclax arm than in the AZA plus placebo arm. Very similar rates of febrile neutropenia have been reported in the M15522 MDS trial with a febrile neutropenia rate of 34%. Importantly, 7% had sepsis and 3% of three patients died during the first 60 days of the trial. And this actually led to the mandatory implementation of antibiotic prophylaxis in this trial. And it also illustrates that MDS patients are probably more vulnerable than AML patients as a whole um, and need to be monitored very closely for uh, sepsis. So um, turning to the management of adverse events, tumor lysis syndrome was a concern initially, but has been turned out to be quite rare with um, an incidence of 1% in the VIH-A trial. Nevertheless, we uh, advise to monitor patients in an inpatient setting during the first cycle if they have AML uh, with a dose escalation daily beginning at 100 milligrams of venetoclax, administration of allopurinol, IV fluids, and monitoring of renal function, LDH, and electrolytes. Patients that have MDS in our experience can be um, treated on an outpatient basis, but need to be monitored very closely. Cytopenias are the main issue um, to deal with, especially in MDS patients. Um, and there is evidence for growth factor support during the therapy breaks if the patients are in remission. And actually, 32% of patients in the VIAL-A trial had GCSF administration. I've already spoken about prophylactic antibiotics, which were mandatory in the MDS trial and should be considered if the patients remain severely cytopenic. Transfusion support is as clinically indicated, and importantly, azoles should not be used or should be used with caution because they require a dose adjustment of venetoclax. Bone marrow assessment should be performed on day 28 of cycle one, as we're used to seeing very rapid responses in these patients. And then again, after cycle two, if no response is seen after cycle one. Um, if the patient is in remission, bone marrow biopsies every six months thereafter or at suspected pro progressive disease are probably sufficient. Um, finally, dose adjustments are required quite often in this regimen. And the first thing to do is to delay the next cycle up to 14 days if the patient is in morphologic remission and grade three or four cytopenia persists. The second step um, in persistent cytopenia would be to decrease the duration of venetoclax administration. Um, for AML, this would be from 28 days to 21 days. And for MDS, this would be from 14 days to seven days. And of note, 52% of patients in the VLA trial actually had um, dose adjustments in this way. And the third step, if uh, cytopenia of grade three or four persists, is to decrease the azacitidine dose from, for instance, seven days to five days. 
It is important to note that if um, cytopenia persists for a longer time, it is important to repeat the bone marrow evaluation to rule out progressive disease or an empty marrow. So in summary, the combination of the natoclax and azacitidine has shown superior overall survival in patients that are not eligible for intensive chemotherapy compared to the placebo and azacitidine arm. And so this um, combination is set to become the new standard of care for this patient group. There are very encouraging response rates which have been seen in higher risk refractory and relapsed MDS in the phase one trial, but we will have to await the results of the phase three trial, which is just beginning to make a final assessment on this regimen for MDS. Um, prolonged myelosuppression is very clinically relevant, for, um, especially in MDS patients, and these patients need to be closely monitored and just dose adjustments are very common. I've shown you that venetoclax and azacitidine can be used as a bridge to allogeneic stem cell transplant and thus may contribute to a possible curative potential for these MDS patients. And venetoclax is being integrated into conditioning regimens in new trials at the moment. Combinations of venetoclax with HMA and IDH inhibitors are also being evaluated. Um, and with that, I'll stop here, and I'd like to briefly acknowledge my colleagues from the German MDS study group and the AMLs G study group, um, who have always been very supportive and constitute a very productive and supportive um, scientific community. And I thank you for listening and happy to take any questions.